I would just ask him, why would you open a gay establishment if you're, if you're not proud of having a gay establishment? You know, it just reinstates that you're trying to profit off gay entertainment and gay art and gay people, which is gross. If you're not about it, then don't fucking open a business for that because it's not appropriate. Don't profit off gay people if you're not going to be there for us. So, outside of drag, my name is Mason. Um, I, I love working out. I love going to the gym whenever I have free time. I love being outdoors whenever I can. I love being out in the sun. Whenever I move away to college, this is it. I'm gonna be away from my hometown. I can experiment. I can, I wasn't even out yet, you know what I mean? I was like, I can experiment. I can just be my full authentic self and I'm gonna try it out. So that was probably, you know, the first time I ever knew that I wanted to do drag. I was going there for like, I guess five, four, five years now. So that was like the place where I like, really started to understand like, what it was like to be queer because I was still like not out to myself yet but then I went there and then like I saw a drag show for the first time it was really it was one of those like magical experiences where you're just like wow this is what it's like to be in a place where everyone just belongs so. the thing is I was one of those people that always went on the stage during like before the drag show started so people did think I was like an actual like performer we I would go like re religiously um and then I finally I decided I wanted to start doing drag so um Tequila Rose started doing um Sunday school which is like a sign up mm -hmm. night and I was like I'll try that and I asked her I was like do y'all allow drag kings because the caption always said drag queens and I was like what about drag kings? And they were like, yes, we need drag kings. So I started there. When, you know, it's already so, it's so rare that we have a place to showcase drag at all in San Marcos, but also having another layer of it being alternative drag is like, you know, extra like interesting and like, I don't know, bold. <laughs> um, I will say that Stonewall was like, it had a different like homey feeling. Uh, maybe it's just cause like, that's where I started. But like, it just, I felt like I was just like, you know, this is my place. I don't know, it felt more inclusive of like, not just cause Oi Van Harry's is great, but like it's mostly gay men there and there's not many places for just like lesbians um, or like non-binary people. So I will say that like someone was one of those places where I felt like everyone was there. Honestly, losing Stonewall like came at the worst fucking time because it's like, I was going through changes in friendships. I was going through a lot of changes with like school and work and just so much. And it just, you know, adding that to the plate was so hard. So I don't feel like I handled it the healthiest ways at first because I did kind of just kind of like seclude myself. And I'm one of those people that doesn't cry in front of people. So I was like, I'm just gonna wait. <laughs> to like really feel the feelings and it took me a while to actually like for it to like actually be like oh that happened um but then like right away we were like we gotta make a petition and so <laughs> me and my friend were like how do we make a petition and so we started like trying to figure something out and then we found out someone else already started making a petition it was just like it was so crazy so it's just like it's really hard to just like try to go out in San Marcos, but the also the other thing is like I my friends, my queer friends that I hang out with, they're still in school, so they can't just go to Austin every night or just like at, on a week night when I'm like performing. So they don't even get a chance to see me perform that often either, which is also sad. Communication is key, I will say that. Um it kind of sucked that it just kinda happened. And I feel like we should have known because a lot more people would have showed up at New Year's. It fucking sucks because it's like, if I could turn back time, I would be there in a heartbeat because it's like, in reality, I didn't even, I didn't even have that much fun in Houston. Like, I really wish that I was there that last night because it's like, you know, there's just so much history and it's like, that establishment, I really wouldn't be here without that establishment. I wouldn't have found my drag sisters. I wouldn't have found my drag mama. I wouldn't have found, I wouldn't have found Tate. You know what I mean? Like, it really is like the hub of 
I don't know, just molding me into the person I am today. So it hurts me so bad that I wasn't there on that last night. But I, I've learned to kind of like, you know, process it and let it go. Cause it's like, there's nothing I can do to ch go back in time and change where I was. But it does fucking suck. Like, mm -hmm. oh my God. If I could go back and change it, I would, but I can't. So I have to just be, you know, I have to like come to terms with that. I had my, I had my reign. I got to do my dances, my little twirls, host my little shows, but I'm so mad for the people that, you know, are coming here and they won't have that because there's gay bars in Austin, but it's like, it's not the same as having a gay bar in your backyard. Stella Warehouse was what she was. She was greatness, but let her, let her sleep, okay?